Hello there, welcome. I'm back with another Turtle Burst Viserai game. And today we're playing Azalea. Azalea is quite a tricky matchup for, for Turtle Burst Viserai. Because while the deck does block quite well, Azalea does have this... Um, she can circumvent blocks, right? She can dominate her arrows and force very um, annoying on hits through, very annoying damage numbers. Uh, on the other hand, Arknight Ascendancy is really strong against decks that don't block well, and Azalea really doesn't block well. So um, the matchup does shape out as a race most of the time, and we are already starting out with a not-so-well-blocking hand, a hand which we would have liked to have if we went first, or maybe if we got to keep some of it. Um, and now we draw into something that really doesn't create many rune chants whatsoever, and what our deck needs is rune chant generation. Uh, before we don't have these at least four rune chants, we really our our hands don't really synergize well with uh, our cards don't synergize well with each other, and with the deck in total. Um, at least we get to keep the become the Arknight. <clears throat> it that will be um, able to fetch us, for example, the Arknight Ascendancy out of our deck, or a buff if we need it. Right now we did draw into um, already a Slogism, and we could now discard the Come to Fight to get an Arknet Ascendancy, but we don't have the Rune Chance to fire the Arknet Ascendancy for free, and we don't uh, have the blue to pay for our Slogism. So what we are very likely just doing uh, is blocking with this hand. Um, now that they play the Fletch the Red Tail, uh, we are probably just pitching for both Oasis right here. Not even drawing a blue with the two aces is also very unlucky. But okay, we're playing with what we got. Seems like Azalea also doesn't have the best of hands here. So we are able to block this out completely. Um, unfortunately, without making any progress towards our main goal. But we'll see. Um, this Azalea isn't playing the standard uh, list with Skullbone Crosswrap. And the what's the bow called? I can't think of it. She's playing Senscar Great Bow with New Horizon instead. So he does she does have two Arsenal zones, and whenever she will put a card from her deck instantly into Arsenal, so for example, use Azalea's ability, she'll put an aim counter on this arrow. <clears throat> so this deck synergizes well with all these arrows that um get get a benefit from um aim counters. For example, the infecting shot gets plus one. Um there is this Judge Jury Executioner, the new arrow that will get this effect, uh, its own effect only when, when there's an aim counter on it. Uh, Fletch a red tail once again, very annoying if we have all those red cards because that doesn't mean we are not able to block with them fully. They will get that debuff. Mm, but right now we are actually able to fire off our first ascendancy combo, even though we don't have rune chance. Uh, because we can play Slogism first, then fetch out the ascendancy with Become the Arknight. We just discard Runic Reckoning. And then Viserai will have made us a third rune chant. And with the tunic counter up and the two pitch from Runeblood Barrier, we're able to pay the last three and come in with a 11 dominate ascendancy. And this while not having like as many rune chants to follow it up with, is still very good. It will first push damage and second, and more important even, get us rolling in this rune chant train because Azalea won't be able to block it out at all. We will get lots of rune chants back and we are very much vibing then. I'm um, really fortunate for us that once again she didn't have any disruption. Um, keeping a full card hand and being able to play it out efficiently against a normal Azalea deck will become way more complicated because they do have Red in their ledger, they do have the Remorseless where you would just pay so much life now to play all these cards out. Um, so yeah, definitely having a bit of luck in, in a still dire situation, though we did not draw ideally. Okay, so right, discarding a non-attack action to fetch an attack action, that's how Become the Arknight works. And because Ascendancy usually costs 6, we'll get reduced for each rune chant. We only have 3, so it's still 3 cost. Now it's coming in. And it'll do some damage. It'll get us rune chants. And then we are actually vibing. Right, 
Right, so Azalea doesn't even block at all. She wants to keep her whole hand, which is understandable, because the larger the hand, the better Azalea converts it into damage. But yeah, every damage we push with Ascendancy also gives us a rune, chan a rune chance, so just blocking one is basically value of two. And if she just puts in an arrow there, she'll deny six damage, if we're being honest. Okay, our next hand won't be able to get us a buff and a and a good attack, although it is possible to just throw the dread trip deck here, but that's probably not worth it. That would also cost us our whole hand just to throw a seven, and the rune chance won't won't go anywhere. They'll stay any around anyways. Mm, yeah, let's see what, what they're throwing. We can put either the, the direct into our arsenal or the come to fight to buff our next good attack. We can even use the become uh, to discard red trip to get a sonata and with the sonata get a rune blood barrier that will basically convert the, the rune chance we have into HP and for our next turn. So we don't really have to block. The more I think about that, that actually sounds like a really good idea. We could put that come to fight into the arsenal, do the Sonata thing, and then um, have 16 rune shots up, I believe, 17. And as long as they are not doing more than 11 damage, we still keep to get to keep six rune shots and our whole hand. So if we draw into something we want to play, we would actually just be able to keep it anyways. Um, if we don't draw into anything we want to play and just blocking cards, that does become a little awkward, so it might just be more safe to block here. Um, putting in that Bloodied Oval, because we're gonna get... As of now, we're still lower than Azalea, but it won't stay forever. So just get that value in. Deny the on-hit from the real shot. And now, let's see, what do we have here? Um... Pummel will be a great setup card, uh, a great buff to, to our next Agnet Ascendancy. With Mordratite, Incantation and probably Scepter, we'll get a nice um, setup turn. And Azalea just flipped into her gem, which is annoying, but she does have New Horizon, so she does have another Arsenal zone and in her next turn she can just get that um, gem out of there. Yeah, and because Azalea is breaking a bit on her hands here, we do keep to get to keep all that armor. And normally Azalea's do put on a lot more pressure, but well, you still have that armor then, and it, it still works out in the end. Um, as of now, we're really ahead in this game though, so yeah, not worrying too much about anything. We also have our Rattlebones still in deck, so even if we find them, we can fetch out an Arknight Ascendancy. <coughs> um, Rattlebones say that you basically banish a card from your an attack action card from your grave and you get to play that this turn and rattlebones cost two so you do need to keep a blue with that usually hmm bolton shot only has go again here if she also plays a rain razor hmm and yeah, while Mototide could have made us two more rune chance, they are not as important as keeping life right now because, as I've been saying, Ascendancy is really strong and the Ascendancy combo only needs us to have six rune chance. Everything above that is only damage. And yes, we would do damage, but if we are alive for longer, we get to keep more, uh, or rather, get to throw more Ascendancies and they create way more value. So yeah, I'd, I'd rather trade in. HP for, for some rune chance here. Um, yeah, those snapdragons just, I think Azalea is a little bit tilted now. The snapdragons would not be necessary. If you buff the Bolton shot and it goes to above its base, it'll have Gogan anyways. Okay, so I played a bit around the, the Rain Razor here. No way for Azalea, no like um, real way for her to give to get another card into her arsenal now. She could have the reload buff, um, take aim, or maybe she does have a non-arrow attack. 
but yeah, we should be fine exactly. Okay, cool, and now we get to play the Runeblood Incantation, ping her with the Scepter again, so either demand a card out of her hand, or get one damage and a rune chant. Really good value on this weapon. Great, and now, while Amplify the Arknet isn't our best target to attack you with here, the Azalea is really low, we are at 15 rune chants, so she's nearly dead from the rune chants alone. We're able to throw the... If we get to keep our hand here, we're able to throw Amplifier with the Slogs and Buff before it and the Pummel on top. So we can threaten 10, 14 plus the 16 rune chance we should have. Um. So yeah, she can block this out probably, but she'll go real low and she'll have to invest hand cards. So we have the tempo of the dead. It's basically dead. All we have to hope for is that there's nothing too crazy coming in and now it's only a bolt and shot on hit seek and destroy that wouldn't matter if we invest our whole hand anyways uh, so yeah i just say we take that keep our armor even and we're sitting very comfortably A different play could have been to just um, block out with um, Slogism and hold the line, or I guess Amplifier rather, and play out the rune blood barrier to then in the next turn convert our rune chance again into life. Because if we have the rune blood barrier out and would get damaged, we lose a rune chance instead. Um, since this, this attack is quite good though, I mean, how much are we threatening here? Just from the 5 card hand, we're doing 14 damage, so that's... And, and we're getting this card from Pamela, I guess. Mm. So, okay, well, that's that's on, on raid, though, but as I said, we're getting the tempo, and... Yeah, there's an argument to be made to go both playlines here, I'm, I must be honest, it's not... It's not um, necessarily the best line here, but it's also... It, it could, it might as well could be. At this point, it's, it's hard to say. Getting tempo when uh, either party is low is, is really important. Just forcing enemies to block. Um, well, especially in case of Azalea. If she doesn't get to keep her whole hand, her game plan gets way, way worse. Okay, so getting hit by all the rune chants. Now we're threatening another 14. If she doesn't respect the pummel, she can just be playing dead here. Um, yeah, the right call for her is just to block with everything. Oh, and it seems like she might do. Okay, well, that's that's well played by her then. Um, we're still throwing pummels. She can destroy still active. We would, I mean, we don't get the discard, but we get the extra damage in, and we would be losing the the cards anyway. Right, and now we have, I believe, one rune chant. We're getting a second one on the next turn. Um, they do have AB though. Okay, and that's an interesting hand. Um, playing Looming Doom might be the angle here. Looming Doom says that at the end of our turn, we'll, de we'll deal two damage to them. Um, so they will only be able to take this two damage fully once, um, and then the next time they'll have to pitch into AB. Or actually, if they ever take two, they, they just die on the next proc. So we do force them into giving us a hand cut now for the next at least two turns. Um, we could also fetch more rune chance with the become the Arknet discarding Arknet Ascendancy. Mm, once again, it's not clear, and that's I really like this about this deck on the. On the surface, the surface is, seems very like plain and simple. Okay, you just stack a few rune chance, and then you buff that big attack, and then you just throw it. But there's so many uh, tutors in this deck um, that you just get all these options in in very 
in in, in a lot a lot of terms and yeah it makes it quite quite interesting and i believe just yeah going for looming doom now weakening azalea's hand and then now we're always threatening her her, her to be dead and always demand a, a card to pitch for ab here we also get to put this uh, reduce into our arsenal and have the big attack up There might have been an, a more elegant option, but for this um, game, it's just enough anyways. Okay, and now let's see, how do we finish this? Just coming in with a big attack might, might do the trick. Because afterwards, she'll still have to pay for Looming Doom. He doesn't want to die. So we strip a whole hand, maybe. Um, let's see. We don't have enough to fetch a... Ninth Blade. Okay, so you can destroy it. That's fine by me. We do need the tuna counter here to pitch for that. <clears throat> Just playing it safe now. And then we will find a way to just push that one damage through. Uh, if we just attack with Dark Knight Ascendancy, we get her the new horizon and a block card then we get at least one card for the rune shant uh, pitching and then she'll have to invest another one to pitch that looming doom away so she'll be left with no arsenal and only one card in hand um so that already might be the correct play now right so pitching to here all right okay I guess Azalea gave up at this point, right? Her hand, um, well, she could have lived, but again, then afterwards, she'll die eventually. Uh, just one looming doom played out and she's dead on one HP. So yeah, that's that's that. I've played more Viserai the, uh, the last two days and I will play more in the future. So please check that out. Leave a subscribe if you want and I'll see you next time.